What's up, fight fans? And we're back at it with another edition of Round 1 Sports Talk. I have a lot to talk about in this episode. Uh, I have a lot of fights to go over. And this is a very controversial video for me. So you're not going to want to miss this video. Like always, please like, subscribe. Um, click the notification icon, bell icon to get all your notification. And without further ado, let's get right into this video. Well, um, I've been scouring around on the internet for things that people had to say about the Chamel Canelo Alvarez fight and Jamel Charlo. And in that undercard, there was a very interesting fight. Camille Moulton made his professional debut on that card. And I wanted to bring that up, but, you know, Jamel Charlo and Canelo Alvarez deserve their own video. So I'm going to touch up on a couple of fights here and as well as some of other people in YouTube channels content and comments on this. There's a guy out there. His name is South Paul. And um, I'm truly starting to think, you know, how the hell this guy has, has any subscribers, right? I'm not a hater by any means or any stretch of the imagination. But the things that this guy is saying on his YouTube channel... I don't know how the hell he has a boxing YouTube channel. He is no longer talking about boxing. He is not educating the public. And I think he's actually hurting boxing. Right? Some of the things that come out of that guy's mouth. Yo. You know. Maybe that's why you watch him. For all the bullshit that he puts out. Right? Camille Moulton made his professional debut. And let me tell you. The kid looked great. All right. Now that is one of Floyd Mayweather's prodigies. Now Floyd Mayweather aside and all the things and antics and all the things behind the scenes that happened with him has nothing to do with Camille Moulton's performance. When I judge a boxer, I judge a boxer for what he does in that square circle. It doesn't matter what he's doing and who he's hanging around with. That doesn't fight for him on fight night. Right. But yet he he's being interviewed and um. Some of the people that are interviewed are asking them legitimate boxing questions. And they ask them, what do you think about Nayoya Inoue? Camille Moulton said, Nayoya Inoue is a great fighter. He has good speed, good power. But like any other fighter that bets on himself, he says that he's hoping that in, in the end of his career, he accomplishes much more. Great answer, kid. He never said he can beat Nayoya Inoue. He never said he wanted to fight Nayoya Inoue. He didn't say any of that. But this idiot, Southpaw, goes on and says, Oh, I think Camille Moulton can beat an undisputed champion of the world, arguably the pound for pound best fighter in the world right now on his debut. That is ridiculous to think. Camille Moulton looks good against that level of competition. Okay? He, that guy that he fought last night was no Nayoya Inoue, and I know that. So, I'm not going to sit here and make a comparison because of what this guy said and lead me into putting down this kid, Camille Moulton. Because that's not what's going on here. This guy, Southpaw, no longer is educating the boxing fans about boxing at all. I gave him the benefit of the doubt, and I checked out the, some of his videos. Man, you should see some of the videos he has on Devin Haney. He doesn't talk about Devin Haney's skill. He doesn't talk about any of Devin Haney's fights. What he talks about is who Devin Haney's dating, who Devin Haney is associated with, who what Devin Haney's father's doing. What the hell does that got to do with boxing? Look. On this channel right here, I don't know if this is a YouTube thing or a Hollywood thing where that, you know, you start yelling out boxers' names because I can guarantee you one thing. If this guy Southpaw ran into Devin Haney in an alley, oh, he, listen, he'd bitch up, all right? He wouldn't have none of that shit, none of that, all that energy he would have would disappear, and he would fold like a lawn chair. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Because he likes to talk about all these men that are in the gym putting in work. He, he, he's not doing it. You know, it's easy to judge a person 
when you don't, you've never even achieved not even a third of what they have accomplished. Devin Haney is 24 years old and he's the undisputed champion of the world. What the fuck have you done? You know, look, I'm never comparing myself to any of them, so there's nothing to compare. But when you're sitting there and you're putting down these men that have great careers in front of them, you are no longer talking about boxing. And that, look, you're hurting the sport that I love and I am offended by some of the things that this guy is saying. I can't even believe he has a YouTube channel. But nevertheless, congratulations to Camille Moulton on his professional debut. It was an impressive knockout. You know, he fought an undefeated fighter as well. You see? So, and, you know, the way that some of the people are coming out and saying that Jamel Charlo um, didn't even fight. Terrence Crawford said that he was just surviving. You know, none of these people and none of these fighters know what that man was going through on that night. And I have an idea. I know he jumped up two weight divisions and I try to tell the world how hard that really is. He, his body will not, could not respond. And until you're ever in a situation like that, you'll understand. First of all, get in shape. Then train yourself to go 12 rounds in that weight class. No sooner that it took you all that time and all those years to figure out how to maintain your level of performance for 12 rounds then jump up two weight divisions and ask to do it there. It's not going to happen. No, that was no fault to Jamel Charlo. He tried. I know he did. He just couldn't open up. It, that, that, that was really difficult what you were asking that man to do. And it's easy to sit down on your couch and judge him when... If you have no idea what that is like, I know that he was drowning in that ring. And a lot of things were going through his mind. He was letting himself down, his corner down, his families, his loved ones. Everybody was there watching him on a worldwide stage. Could you imagine what was going through that man's mind, corner, round after round? He gave it everything he could. But yet, all you give him is criticism. Jamel Charlo, I want to personally thank you for trying. Nobody else signed on the dotted line. And the other ones that should have fought weren't offered. Look, um, Demetrius um, um, Andre and um, the monster David Benavides is now scheduled to fight in the fall. And the reason why they have to fight each other is because the champion is nowhere to be found. He's out fighting two, a guy two weight classes down from his division. And fighting fights that have no irrelevancy into the 168 pound division. That's what he's been doing in his last three fights. Now although I have to remind you, some of you know this, but I'm just going to remind you. That each sanctioning body has a number one ranked Contender, meaning the WBC has a number one ranked contender, which they have David Benavidez, but the IBF also has a number one ranked contender. The WBO has a number one ranked contender, and sometimes they're in agreements and sometimes they are not. So you can sneak in a lackluster number one ranked contender under one of the sanctioning body's belts and say you got a title defense. But those are not the top guys and you know what we're talking about. Here at Round 1 Sports Talk, I only educate about facts and boxing and what the boxers do inside the ring. And if what they're doing outside the ring is affecting their performance, then I will bring it up. But other than that, who are we to criticize a man who he sleeps with, dates, what he eats, where he goes... That has nothing to do with the sport. What I am concerned about is what, how you perform on the night you have a fight. And that is it. 
We all have faults in our world. None of us are perfect. And for someone to come out and constantly shit on boxers and fighters, but claim that they're supporting fighting, these are these kind of channels right here. But in a sense, I could see why. Because there are a lot of fans out there that just like drama. But unfortunately here, all you're going to get is facts. Look, we have an exciting year. And I'm hearing that Tyson Fury has um, a deal in place with Uzik for April. Um, look, how many times have we heard this fight get scheduled? I'm not jumping out of my seat this time neither. How many times did they say Dante Wilder and Joshua were going to fight? I'll wait. They say a lot of things in boxing. All right? But until you get in that ring, then I'll tell you we have a fight. Now, look, I will not sit here and allow someone just to feed the boxing fans and the general boxing public bullshit and say that a kid like Camille Moten could beat right now a champion like Nayoya Inoue. That would never happen. Nayoya Inoue would hurt that kid right now. Okay? That's the truth. Now, um, as far as, look, education goes in the sport of boxing, I will always invite the new fan, the casual fan, the more experienced fan to join me on this channel if you want to learn about boxing because I also want to learn about boxing as well and I value what my subscribers and all viewers have to say that's what I think about boxing and I will always cover boxing and keep it at its purest that I can I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like, subscribe to the videos, and like always, I'm on to the next one. Peace.